Welcome back. I hope that you are in good health. Which omega-3s are best? Is DHA better than EPA at reducing inflammation and heart disease? EPA and DHA are nutrients that provide life-sustaining benefits for human health. From conception to old age, humans need EPA and DHA, and since we cannot make these fats in our bodies, we must eat them. EPA and DHA are omega-3 fats and the predominant fats in oily fish, seafood, and purified fish oils. Most research has examined their combined health effects, but few studies have compared them. High doses of the omega-3 DHA may boost the omega-3 index more than EPA, says a new study. According to previous findings published in the British Journal of Nutrition, at least 250 milligrams of the long-chain omega-3 fatty acids, EPA and DHA, was associated with a 35% reduction in the risk of sudden cardiac death. DHA has previously been found to alter the function of the brain associated with working memory. Scientists from the University of Cincinnati showed for the first time using neuroimaging that supplementation with DHA alters the function activity in cortical attention networks in humans. A high omega-3 index, which reflects a relatively high content of EPA and DHA in the membranes of red blood cells, has been associated with a lower risk of coronary heart disease and mortality in observational studies. Scientists from the Université Laval in Quebec, the University of South Dakota, and Omega Quaint Analytics, LLC, analyzed data from 48 men and 106 women, randomly assigned to receive 2.7 grams per day of EPA or DHA, or 3 grams per day of corn oil for 10 weeks. Results of the double-blind controlled crossover study indicated that the omega-3 index of participants in the DHA group increased by an average of 5.6%, compared with a 3.3% increase in the EPA group. In addition, the researchers observed potential gender differences. The baseline omega-3 index was higher in women, 6.3%, than in men, 5.8%. However, the differences between DHA and EPA in increasing the omega-3 index tended to be higher in men, 2.6%, than in women, 2.2%. Furthermore, supplementing with 2.7 grams of DHA for 10 weeks was more effective than a similar dose of EPA at decreasing markers of chronic inflammation and improving the blood lipid profile in men and women with excessive belly fat. The results are consistent with the findings of a previous meta-analysis showing that supplementing with DHA leads to a greater decrease in triglycerides and greater increases in LDL and HDL cholesterol compared to EPA. The increase in the omega-3 index is greater with high-dose DHA supplementation than with high-dose EPA, which is consistent with the greater potency of DHA to modulate cardiometabolic risk factors. The extent to which such differences between EPA and DHA in increasing the omega-3 index relates to long-term cardiovascular risk needs to be investigated in the future. Given the debate about which is better, EPA or DHA, this study was long overdue. It was a well-designed and conducted study with an outcome that serves as a solid basis upon which further research can be designed. As always, thank you for watching. Good day and good health.